Okay, I've got uh, 602, so I think we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, welcome to open house number four for the Rice Street Visioning Study. My name is Scott McBride. I'm with Bolton and Mink, and I'm the consultant project manager lead on this project. I will have two co-presenters with me today. I will have Nick Fisher, Ramsey County project manager, and I'll have Hyla Mays, also of Bolton and Mink, as the deputy project manager. They will be taking sections of the, the presentation. And a couple of, couple of things right off the bat that I want to talk about is um, what we're going to do tonight is the format we will follow is we will give a presentation. And that will be followed by small group breakouts. So there is an opportunity for us to, to get into smaller groups and have a conversation about this, this process and this project. Um, what we, here's what we're going to hear tonight. We'll give just a brief reminder of what this project is and, and why we're doing it. Um, we'll give an engagement update. We, we've had a lot of engagement over time and, and we'll tell you what we've been hearing from people. Um, and the big thing is, and number three, we'll, we'll unveil our recommended concept. So we'll, uh, we'll let people know kind of where we're going with this project. And towards the end, also we'll talk about the implementation, just a brief implementation plan and then have some next steps and, and follow up. Um, one thing I will note is that this is the, the beginning of a comment period for us. So we're, we're launching about a 30 day comment window. So people will be able to, to comment on this. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end when we talk about the tools you have available to you to provide comments to us. This being one of them, but we have some online tools that, that we'll get into a little bit later. Um, next slide. What a, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, I'm guessing that um, this is not anyone's first Zoom meeting, but just a reminder that please stay on mute during the presentation um, so that uh, we won't have distractions. Um, feel free to use the chat box. We'll, we'll try to answer. We've got a, a number of staff online now and we'll try to answer those questions real time if we can. So feel free to use the chat. Um, if you have an urgent question, feel free to raise your hand and uh, we'll, we'll call on you. Although I, I, I will note that we do have time in the breakout sessions to really get into some detailed conversations about things. So, so that would be that would be preferred way to go to do that. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and get into our presentation and I will introduce Nick Fisher from Ramsey County to, to start our project overview. Hello, like Scott said, I'm uh, Nick Fisher from Ramsey County and uh, we can go on to the next slide. So what is this project all about? Uh, so we're talking about Rice Street uh, from Pennsylvania to Wheelock Parkway. It has a diverse mix of residents, users, businesses, and other modes of travel. So there's a, a large number of walkers, transit users, uh, customers using local stores. All those people have to be planned for with our project. Uh, we're also looking at safety and traffic, community development, business vitality, bike and pedestrian connections, uh, public safety, and livability concern. And the goal uh, tonight is to develop a plan for Rice Street. So we'll get into that later. Uh, next slide. So we have lots of other goals, uh, public safety, improve bicycle safety, promote uh, community investment, promote healthy community, uh, maintain transit service, both, both existing transit service and uh, plan for a future of our BRT bus rapid transit out here, uh, provide business support, enhance pedestrian safety, create an inviting environment, promote economic development, workforce development, and improve vehicle safety. Next slide, please. So our project timeline, so what's been happening? We've had uh, lots of public engagements over the last few years. Uh, tonight, we're kind of wrapping up our preliminary design, trying to get towards the end of that. And our next step is come with a implementation plan. So how are we gonna build it? When are we gonna build it? and start final design in 2022 and beyond. Uh, next slide. And I'll pass this off to Hyla and talk about what we've heard. Thanks, Nick. Again, I'm Hyla Mays with Bolton and Mink. I'll be covering the engagement section. As mentioned earlier, um, extensive engagement has been an important part of this process. Um, again, we're all glad to hear from you today because this process has been ongoing for some time and um, it's, not, it's not anywhere near done yet in terms of the conversations 
But my job today is to tell you what we've heard so far, what we've been doing so far, and how we're looking ahead. Um, this information right here just reflects recent engagement that's happened over the past couple of years um, in a variety of different phases. Um, because of COVID, we've been heavily leaning on our online engagement, but we've also been managed, able to do in-person invites as well. Um, this just shows a general schedule of the different phases of work that had happened. We went from looking at so where Rice Street is today, um, early on in terms of existing conditions, um, exploring different roadway design concepts, sort of ideas for what is present, um, narrowing it down to top three, and then today you're going to hear from us to talk about our recommended design. Next slide. Our engagement strategy has been very intentionally inclusive. Um, our focus has, has been on working with the community. I'm not just coming, showing up and being the experts and then sort of jetting away, but really establishing and developing those relationships. Um, this is about investing in community institutions as well, um, sometimes financially even in terms of making sure that there's some benefit for the folks involved in this process. Um, building relationships and, and capacity is important. One of our mantras has been as a team that we're, that we're trying to think about the long-term and about how this sets us up, not just for this current engagement phase, but for future conversations. Because we know these are the issues and challenges here and opportunities are long-term commitments. This is not something that gets done overnight. Um, the picture here is of Melvin, one of our great artist liaisons, and I'll talk a little bit more about that unique feature in a second. But suffice to say, um, our approach has been very, has been covering quite a lot of ground and fits with the holistic scope of our project. Next slide. The community liaisons are, are, are a wonderful feature of our work. Um, I would say we have Juana and um, Jen Krava somewhere on our line here who are representing the forecast team, as well as, of course, Lissa with Formula, who have been helping us set up um, this really great aspect of our project. Um, the community liaisons, if you're not familiar with them, have, have been some artists and creative people who live in the community and work here and play here. This is their home and have been um, using their gifts and talents to help us to do authentic, meaningful, in-person um, creative engagement. Um, some of the activities they've been engaged in in recent times have focused on um, developing activity book and inserts, um, which is a wonderful um, coloring book and activity book that's out there, forming community partnerships, um, doing focus group discussions, or very much intentionally reaching into the community and saying, everyone's welcome, but we wanna be intentional about certain people. Um, some pop-up engagement activities. Um, picture you see here is some a little um, from earlier when the weather was a little nicer of some in-person engagement. And next up is a cookbook for community, which I think we'll probably be rolling out even more in the next one. We're, we're really playing into the term rice to, to look into um, how we're not just describing um, so this roadway concept, but what is it, what makes community special, including the food. Next slide. So since we last met, because um, we've been giving engagement updates along the way. Next slide. Um, we have a comment map, a concept comment map where we've had the, the general robot concepts out there. Um, as mentioned earlier, there were three on ABC, which you'll hear a little more about later. We've had an opportunity for people to respond to very generally um, framed concepts and to provide some feedback on them. We've had over 135 comments where people have a chance to drop in a pin, like, dislike, and build on other people's comments as well. Um, this is a good way for people to start exploring what this will look like, even though at this point it was pretty general. We're gradually rolling this concept out and making sure people understand what this means for their community. Um, installing sidewalk stickers. Um, there were several different efforts we made where, where we really tried to think, how do we get in front of people who are out and about in the community who might not have gotten the postcard or the email or seen the website, or went, gone to one of our events. And these giant, cool, colorful decals were installed. Um, a couple of our team members, Juan and Jen there, putting them out so, to sort of point people to the website and point them to resources so they can learn more and engage online. Um, we also have provided opportunities for people to have in-person engagement or, or offline if they don't have access to digital platforms. There are over 30 installed on the quarter. They might still be out there. I don't know if they are or they've been removed, but they're probably getting a little worn at this point. And next slide. Um, and a Rice Lavender um, Block Party at Marydale Festival. We had a couple events um, where you get to see our, to call the Rice Street Receiver, that wonderfully decorated um, golf cart vehicle in the upper left was deployed as an eye-catching device um, to pull people into creative activities featuring our artists and to have them engage in what, what's the important to the court about the quarter. Educate about the project, 
and talk about what features they want to see and what makes this a meaningful and livable place. Um, over 485 comments collected as part of that effort. And you see some of the wonderful things that our, our team has produced, including those custom printed scars. So what the, the point of this engagement isn't just to do things that are, are, are beautiful and fun. It is to have meaningful feedback that is connected to the results of what we're trying to achieve here. Here's some high level takeaways from our engagement scope that really focus on what we've heard over and over again in the themes. Because one of the great things is as we've done engagement is we're starting to hear a lot of patterns and rhythms. Not that everyone agrees. We certainly have a diversity of opinions, but what's important to people often comes up, up again and again. And some of these themes, um, while we've captured all the engagement and all the themes, we wanna make sure we, we're honing in on some of the most important ones. Um, we've, we've heard over and over from many different people, the importance of high priority and pedestrian and traffic safety that people have a difficult time crossing this road, either on vehicle and especially on foot, and are concerned about others doing the same, especially children in this area. That is a priority and we recognize it as such, and it already was a priority, it's even more so after talking to people who have to navigate this road every day and feel unsafe doing so. Carefully considering bike and transit facility options. Um, these are important components and we're gonna, you're gonna hear today in detail about how those are being incorporated in a recommended concept um, because this is this is a, a multimodal corridor and all sorts of different vehicles and people need to be able to travel on it. However, it's a tight spot. Um, there's a lot to consider and we got a lot of feedback in terms of how it's important, but how other things are important too and how we need to make sure we're balancing considerations. And of course, um, supporting the community beyond the roadway. Um, we heard plenty of feedback that wasn't even about the roadway directly, but was about what we're here, which is about making this a better community and more livable. Account development, business vitality, plenty about public safety, and just generally about livability. Um, our implementation of this project covers a much broader swath than just the roadway, though of course some of it is not in control of this particular project. But we made sure to capture that input as we're going because we think it's important as we're talking to community partners and agencies in the area, that there's a shared vision for what this road can be and that if the, the expense and effort and, and disruption of a new roadway project can be used to catalyze other positive change that, that we're all for that. Next slide. So just mentioning that this kind of reiterates, but just to be clear as we're transitioning to the next stage, which we'll, Scott will talk through, is how this informs a project. Um, you'll see in, as looking at hearing about the concepts, how um, pedestrian and traffic safety improvements have been integrated throughout in a lot of different ways. A re reconfiguration of the roadway in terms of the lanes and space and enhanced crossings, um, including some restrictions to make sure that it's safer for people to walk and bike across. Bike and transit options and enhancements, dedicated bike facilities um, and improvements to transit. One, one great um, addition that happened midway through our process is that the BRT, um, the G-Line project, BRT project for Metro Transit was announced for this corridor. It's in a little bit different time frame, and this isn't replacing the project that will follow, but certainly had an opportunity for us to start folding in conversations around that and around people's aspirations for improved transit here. And community support in general. Um, we heard a lot about implementation and partnership approach beyond the roadway, and have had a lot of parallel conversations since then with the key stakeholder agencies and community organizations who care about these issues. Again, we're not here to be the solution for public safety and livability in the community in general, um, but if we don't, we recognize that people know that if we're not talking about that and not being authentic about that, we don't fully understand where the community is either. And that goes for many topics. So next slide. Um, transitioning over at this point to Scott to talk about the, the process to a recommended design. Thanks, Isla. And you can go to the next slide, Nicole. So this actually feeds right into what Hila was just talking about. Um, we've got kind of a two-pronged approach to how we evaluated alternatives and the criteria that we developed. One is on the left side, you see kind of our, I would call it our, our normal transportation goals and criteria. And they do follow the, the city of St. Paul and Ramsey County's um, modal priorities. So how do we provide safe pedestrian accommodations? So weigh alternatives against that safe bicycle connections, improved transit service, safe traffic operations, and then a welcoming street state scape. So I would, I would call those kind of our, our normal transportation criteria that, that we, that we evaluate against and we, we try to meet. Um, but we're bringing, as Hila was mentioning, we're bringing along with that community context goals. So things we heard from the community, um, how do the various concepts 
affect economic development and business support? Um, how are the people that live around here and uh, want to be employed, how are they um, affected by this project? So development of that workforce and employment, the health of the community. Um, are we providing a safe, healthy environment for people to, to work and live in? And then as, as Hila mentioned, the public safety element. It's not just about traffic safety, but it's public safety holistically. And then there are some community defined goals that we heard from you all throughout this process that, that we're weighing uh, these uh, concepts against. So next slide. So in, I'll tell you just a little bit about where we are in the process and how we got here. About a year ago, we had a, we had a similar event to this where we uh, unveiled seven different concepts, bike alternatives, walking alternatives, traffic alternatives, parking alternatives. And um, we, we got feedback on those seven concepts. Um, we narrowed that down to three different concepts um, that we, we brought out to the community in, in July at another open house. And that's the feedback that, that Hila was just referencing there. We got a lot of feedback on those three concepts. So here we are today at, at the fourth open house, and we're going to, to talk about what we think is, is the recommended concept for this and get your feedback on that. So the next slide, just a little reminder of, of where we've been and, and what, we've, what we've been looking at all along here. This is the existing cross section of the roadway. Um, and I, I, I don't need to, to spend probably a lot of time on this <clears throat> because you all, you all know what this is. It's a four lane undivided roadway where parking is, is sometimes a mystery. Um, it's on again, off again, depending on which direction you're traveling and what time of day it is and, and can be confusing. And there's about 10 feet of, of space outside of the curb lines before you get to the property lines or, or building faces there of usable space, which, which results in a, a narrow boulevard and a, a, a six foot sidewalk. So the important thing to take away from the existing is as we, as we looked at the existing, existing conditions, we analyzed safety, we analyzed traffic, we analyzed a, a number of factors that do in, in large part to the crash history out here. Um, we do not think that a four lane undivided like this is considered a viable option. So when you look at the three alternatives that, that we, we brought out to the public in July, none of them have this four lane. And if you'll turn to the next one, Nicole, I'll do a brief review of the concepts. And I'll start in the middle um, with, with this first concept and say that all of the three concepts that we looked at have the same cross section between the curb lines. So we've gone from that four lane undivided down to a three lane divided. We've narrowed the traffic lanes down to the, the minimum standard traffic lanes that we can have. So we've, we've squeezed the roadway as much as we can. And this provides for turning movements. Um, one of the, the problems with a four lane undivided is lack of turning movements. So people get stuck behind left turning vehicles or right turning vehicles all the time. And that creates a lot of turbulence in the flow. So, so this is the same through all of the three concepts. So concept A in particular is a, is a bikeway alternative, consists of on the left side of this or the west side of the, the street, you see a, a two, an eight foot two way separated bike, bikeway facility, followed by a slight buffer and a six foot sidewalk. And on the west side, you see a five foot boulevard and a six foot um, sidewalk. So I wanna just pause on the, the green area here and talk about the, the, that boulevard. We, we tend to refer to it as kind of a flex zone because you need a space next to the curb line to be able to put, as you see in this picture, lights, um, signs, various fire hydrants, just things that, that need to go within the public realm. So we need a little bit of space there um, that's outside of the sidewalk area. I call it a flex zone because other things can be put there. It can be concrete and can make a for a wider sidewalk in front of businesses, for instance. It can be grass, uh, for instance, in front of residents. It can be landscaped area. It can be a number of different things. So it's very flexible. That what what actually happens to that flex zone or that green space there will be determined a little bit later in the design process. 
So you go to the next, thank you. Um, this concept B is also a, uh, a bikeway alternative. Starting on the left side, there's a 12 foot shared use path. So it's it's not the separated bike facility that you saw before, it's a, it's a shared use path available to pedestrians and bicyclists alike. And again, I'll, I'll remind you that's the, it's the same roadway width as well, three lane, three lane section in the roadway. On this one, we're able to get just a slightly wider boulevard or flex zone area on that west side of six feet. On the east side, we're able to get a, a little bit more there as well, six foot boulevard and a six foot sidewalk for 15, or excuse me, 12 feet of, of total, total width there. And, you know, I don't want to be a spoiler or anything, but this is the option that we're looking at. Now, I'll dwell on that a little bit later. Um, go to concept C. Concept C was considered to be more of a pedestrian alternative. So there is no bike lane on this alternative. So it's, it, it's pretty symmetrical with a seven foot boulevard, a little bit extra boulevard and an eight foot sidewalk. So 15 feet of total space on both sides of the road. And um, so the, the sidewalks do uh, are allowed to become a little bit wider in that in that alternative. Okay, so let's let's talk about our, our preferred recommended concept. And that is concept B. So it is a bikeway alternative. And I'll get to some of the whys on why we chose this in a uh, in a minute. But first, I thought it'd be a good idea just to one, remind you, and then take a little bit closer look at, at what this kind of looks and feels like. So again, this is a 12 foot shared use path with a six foot boulevard on the east, excuse me, the west side or the left side that you're seeing there, and a six foot boulevard and a six foot sidewalk for a total of 12 feet on the, on the east side of the roadway. Um, the shared use path is again available for pedestrians and for bicycles to, to ride on. Now let's, let's talk about, go ahead, and about a little bit about what this feels like. So what I'm going to show you now is just a handful of really draft artist, artist renderings. And I will say that we are at about 5% design right now. So, so many decisions yet to be made. So we don't want to say that, that any of this is, is set in stone yet because it's not. Um, we're looking for feedback from, from a from our constituents, from all of you out there. And that's really important to inform this process. So what I'm gonna do is, is walk through a couple of spots on here and, and show you different kinds of, of treatments that, that we can put out here and some, some that we're suggesting be put out here. So this rendering, you see the observation point there, we're, we're between Hyacinth and Ivy. We're looking north toward Ivy. And you can see some of the, the features on there, the New Horizon Academy and the the Hmong Elder Center. And if you go to the, the rendering, what this is showing is an example. <clears throat> that's, a, that's a great question um, from Kim O'Brien. I just saw that pop up. This is, a, an, is an example of where we would turn that center turn lane into a median for various reasons. And at Ivy Street here, we're, we're actually showing that median going all the way through Ivy Street. So Ivy would become a right in, right out situation. You could not cross at Ivy. What this does is, what the median does is, is a couple of things. Exactly, Kim, <laughs> no, no worries. Um, what, what this does is a couple of things. Um, one is it, it helps to slow traffic, having the median in there. And two, it creates a, a crossing opportunity for pedestrians where they only have to cross one lane of traffic at a time, have refuge in the middle, and then cross, look the other way and, and cross the other way. So again, this is an example of how we can take a median through the uh, a street and create a right in, right out situation on Ivy. Next. So this one is looking at um, Montana. So we're, we're right between Nebraska and Montana, closer to Montana, again, looking to the north where the McDonald's is and go ahead and, and throw show the, the uh, rendering. So this is an example of, of a partial median. So it's a pedestrian refuge median. So um, we, we still show the left turn lane in the southbound direction. That'll get you to Nebraska. And you are able to, uh, to, to come in and out of Nebraska there 
but there is an island there that allow a pedestrian to come across and, and have refuge. So it's an example of a pedestrian median that we'll have sprinkled throughout this, this layout. The next one. So this is one that, uh, that we wanted to show because of our partnership with, uh, with St. Paul Parks um, and the new rec center. This is at Lawson where, where the new rec center is being proposed. And if you'll go ahead and show that, we're showing uh, just a kind of a ghosted out where the, the future North End Community Center will be. And this one does not have a, this still has the left turns in both the north and south direction. So this shows what it, it feels like without that median in there, um, but pedestrian crossings in there. Next. And so this is more on the south end down at, down at Winnipeg and it's looking north and uh, we wanted to show this, if you'll go ahead. We wanted to show this one because this is an example of kind of that tighter commercial part of the corridor where, where everything is pretty much building, the right of way is building face to building face. And you can see the, the shared use path on the left side, the flex zone here is, 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 is it in paved condition. We do have a median across there. And um, so it's, a, it's a just a little bit tighter kind of an area that, that shows what the built up area looks like on the south end. Um, mentioned earlier that I'd come back to, to why concept B. Um, it really addresses the, uh, the county and the city's um, modal priorities where it prioritizes bike and pedestrian accessibility over auto accessibility. It does have a new dedicated bike accommodation. And it's worth noting that um, the, the bike is shared with the, uh, with the pedestrians. And if you go back one slide, Nicole, you'll see it, it, it can be pretty close to some buildings as well. It'll be right up against buildings. So, so we're anticipating that this would function as a real, very much a, a slower kind of a bikeway as opposed to a separated bikeway and a kind of a commuting fast bikeway. Um, the, the bikeway would in this, in, in this space be uh, considered to be really access to four locals, to local businesses, not that you can't commute through, you can, um, but it's a, it's a slower, more calmer um, type, of, type of bikeway facility. Um, in addition, we have to, in addition, we are also um, improving pedestrian access and crossings across this area as well. So it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, a lot to like for, for bike and pedestrian accessibility here. Um, when we thought about, well, should we do the separated facility versus the shared use? Um, one of the things about concept A is it's just so tight that, that both the bikeway, well, all of the elements, the sidewalk elements, the bikeway elements, the roadway elements are all down to their very tightest minimum configurations and it feels very constrained in there. This one gives us a, a little bit more flexible space. Um, things that we can do in the public realm like greening, um, like green infrastructure, streetscaping, art, um, a number of different things that, that, can, that can be done there. It's a little bit easier to be maintained, but there's a lot of conversation yet to go to, to figure out what we're going to include out there and how that's going to be maintained, but we're cognizant of that. And it does also <clears throat> allow us to, to provide more on-street parking, although um, we are, we are, there are questions remain. We intend to talk to businesses in this area as we work through these details over the next months to talk about um, off-street parking versus on-street parking, where it's needed, where it's not, how it's implemented. So, so parking questions remain about this. And next slide. Um, I mentioned one of the one of the uh, the pictures I showed was um, at Ivy Street where we showed a median going through. So we're proposing um, as as a first as kind of a first cut at this the potential for those medians across these um, roadways at Winnipeg, at Hatch, at Cook, at Rose, and at Ivy. So. Um, when we get to the, the part about uh, online engagement, we'll have a map that shows all of these that you'll be able to comment on 
and you'll be able to comment on that on uh, online, as uh, Hila was indicating with the input ID, and and uh, continue that conversation on there. We're talking about the removal of some left turns as well in order to make pedestrian safety. Um, left turns removed northbound at Ivy, for instance, um, because there's a lot of pedestrian activity there, southbound at Cottage and southbound at Hoyt. So there is there are a number of those that that we we think we can achieve out here, which again helps pedestrians, helps the bike realm, slows traffic down and allows allows for a calmer, um, safer facility out here. And next, did want to just touch briefly on the, the BRT project. Um, one of the things that that we've uh, we've uh, worked with all along here is we're a little bit ahead of Metro Transit's uh, BRT process. Um, and they just found out not too long ago that that uh, one, the G line is is going slated to be implemented. Uh, I believe it's only partially funded at this point. The year is anticipated 2025 to 2030. So somewhere in that time frame, this would be implemented. So we'll be a little bit out ahead of, of that. Um, and you can expect to see Metro Transit start their engagement process for the G line within the next, the next uh, year. So that'll be happening. Um, however, we are making sure that we're accommodating of that. Right now, um, Metro Transit is anticipating stops at Larpenter, at Arlington, at Maryland, at Front, Sycamore, and these are all just proposed at this time um, until Metro Transit comes in and, and engages the public, does their process, and works through it. So we are accommodating those and working very, very closely with Metro Transit throughout this process. So this is a, this is a great thing for Rice Street to be able to have um, infrastructure improvements like Ramsey County is proposing, coupled with this transit improvement that Metro Transit is proposing. And next slide. So a few considerations here as we, as we start to work into the implementation portion of this. Um, one, of the, one of the tenants we wanna put out there is we don't, want to disrupt the whole roadway all at once. It's a two mile long stretch and we wanna minimize disruptions to businesses and travelers. Construction construction is a disruption. We, we fully understand that. Um, we wanna focus first on the areas that need the biggest change and work in a, in a really systematic way through the corridor so that we can, we can try to minimize those disruptions to both businesses and the people who use the corridor. Also note that the design as we go through the corridor can be flexed by the roadway segment. Um, I mentioned earlier, if you recall the, the Winnipeg uh, rendering that we had, there's a, it's very tight in there. The buildings will we'll have a few design considerations in there that, uh, that are specific to that area. As we get, for instance, on the north where it opens up a little bit, you're, you've got more offsite parking a um, little better sight lines, we'll be able to do different design elements, touches up there that, that will vary. So we're able to, to flex that throughout the corridor. And then differences in need of, for on-street parking as well, where we're the commercial corridor, let's, let's say around Maryland to the south, very commercial, a little bit less off-street parking, more businesses right up against it, more need for parking. When we get to the north, there's a lot of parking that's off site. So, so there's a lot of differences and we can flex that parking uh, demand and parking design as we go through this. And then the future discussions we have, we'll really get into the details. Um, we've got concept ideas at a higher level now for how these intersections and pedestrian crossing will be treated. But as we get into design and we really start kind of peeling back the onion, We'll get into real details about what works and what doesn't and do that along with the community and along with the uh, the agencies that that operate this. So there's a lot of design to come and, and a lot of detail to come in within that design. And as I mentioned earlier, very close coordination with with uh, Metro Transit on both existing transit, local service today 
and a future BRT facility that will come through. So there's service to be thought about, as well as the facilities that we put on the on the ground out here. And next, so I mentioned earlier that uh, that uh, we're we've got two sets of goals that we're bringing along: one transportation, and one of those livability. We've actually got a framework within our within our implementation plan that we're starting to draft now. So the blue line that you see there are the roadway, the multimodal improvements that uh, Ramsey County Public Works is is responsible for. We're also bringing along those other elements and asking questions like, how does this project support and enhance land use and, and development out here? What does it actually look like? What's the public realm look and feel like? What's what's the place that we that we're creating out here as we change this? How can the neighboring businesses and the residents actually benefit from this project as it goes through? Is there work to be done that uh, that the neighborhood can do? And then how can we enhance health out here? Um, not just safety, but actual health and the safety of those people that use this corridor. Again, not just automobile users, but everybody around the corridor. So, and that's public safety from a, from a bigger perspective. So that, that's the presentation that we wanna, we'll wanna bring you through now. And we wanna actually go into breakouts now. And so this is how it, how it will work. And we will select breakout for you and you'll be able to click a button and go to a breakout room. Each breakout session will be uh, facilitated by one of our staff. And we'll also have somebody there helping to take notes as we go along through this. And it's intended to be just a dialogue about what you just heard, uh, what questions remain, what questions do you have about this? Do you like the choice that we made? Do you not like the choice that we made? Maybe we're, we're open for, for a conversation about this. And after breakout sessions, we're anticipating just about 10 minutes for that. We'll do about 10 minutes of breakout, and then we'll bring everybody back together and just have a, a short report out, just a couple of minutes per session. We'll have a short report out on what happened in that breakout session. And then I've got just a few slides left about implementation. So it'll be a, probably just another five or 10 minutes of going through the, how, we're, how we anticipate implementing this, this process as well. So Nicole, any other instructions that uh, we should give people um, or will we oh. just magically disappear? Yep, I'm gonna hit the button and then everyone should be sent to their breakout rooms. Thank you. Hit the join button.
We still have some people returning to the main session here. So just give it a minute while everyone gets back to this main setting. All right, looks like everyone is back in the main session. If Scott wants to take it back over from here. Yeah, unfortunately, Scott just found his mute button. It was, it was hiding on another screen. So uh, yeah, we got just a, we just got just a couple of, of, uh, of slides left after this, but we'd like to do just a little bit of reporting back. And uh, let's, let's start out with the, the group that I was in, because I know Hawana is always ready. We had a we had a good conversation there, and I think actually we could have gone a little bit longer. Hawana, you want to give a quick report out on on what we were uh, talking about there? Sure. We had a great group of 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 people um, who live near Rice, and then we had a great group of people who are involved in gardening and so were um, joining us because they have concerns about the future of the Rice Street Gardens as well. Some of the topics and, and questions that were raised was um, questions about parking and how much parking or how little parking is going to be available and how that's going to affect some of the adjacent streets and some of the other arteries in the community there. There was a question raised about whether or not roundabouts were considered as an alternative. And the response was, yes, they were. But because of the tightness of that corridor, um, they were not a good option for that area. Um, there were questions raised about um, whether or not we should, we'll need to start now. If the idea is to educate the community about this change in the mixed pedestrian bike um, modalities that will, will come as a part of um, option B, if it might not be a good idea to start now with the community so that people are prepared for that when it happens, the continuing conversation regarding speed limits and how people are concerned because with COVID, there seems to have been a rise in speeding and running of red lights and things like that. And so as we investigate traffic calming options along Rice Street, might we also want to take some time and look at the adjacent streets and see what might be available to that, to that community um, as well. Thanks, Oana. Um, it's probably worth noting that uh, Taylor wanted to make sure he got the last statement in at five seconds left, and that's that uh, the goal should not just be to try to slow down people on rice, but every street that's not a highway. So I'm going to give you your props there, Taylor. Um, let's go to uh, Brian Nemitz's group. All right, I, I took some notes, and I'm hoping I captured um, our, our discussion. Um, pretty well. I, I think that um, there was uh, a comment right before um, we broke off into sections um, and that and the person that made the comment about um, uh, slowing the traffic down in such a way that it, it inhibits movement um, and being stuck behind buses and whatnot uh, ended up in our group and um, they, they felt like that this was an overfocus on the bikes and the pedestrians because um, as they've traveled along the corridor um, a variety of times, variety of you know, days of the week, things like that, that um, their, their on the ground observation is that lice, Larpenter and Rice, <laughs> not lice, um, Larpenter and Rice 
um, has a lot of pedestrian traffic, but that, you know, there are little pockets here and there, but not really kind of as an overall, um, you know, in, the, in this corridor study area. And um, that, you know, Rice is really is a connector between uh, Shoreview and to downtown St. Paul and, and back. And, um, you know, and, I, and then I think uh, many, many others um, expressed interest in wanting to actually use and cross rice, including saying, I live on the west side. And if I go see friends on the east side, I get in my car because I'm afraid someone's not going to stop when I'm trying to cross the street. If I want to go to Dars, I, I might get one lane of traffic to stop, but I don't know if I'm going to get the other three. So it's kind of Russian roulette um, just for not just for for delicious ice cream. Um, you know, and, and, and I think that it was also countered that yes, yes, the goal is to get traffic onto 35E um, that, is, that is looking to get from Shoreview to downtown St. Paul. Um, so yeah, the, so we talked a lot about it, this chicken and egg scenario and, and um, that people just don't walk for personal safety, um, you know, and that we need to look at not, um, you know, someone expressed, we did not, to not look at what we are now or what we want to be as a community. And, um, with the communities that are coming online, you know, that there's going to be a lot more foot traffic, particularly in that area. And so, you know, we, what we can, you know, let, let's continue to try to support that. Um, and, and then there were there were a couple of mentions and I, 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 if I'm wrong about which intersection it was, I think we've talked a little bit about Ivy and a couple of options along Ivy, um, but that there was a business um, and I don't recall the name of the business, but it had a very small parking lot and there, were, there was talk of a lot of odd and awkward movements to get in and out of that parking lot. Um, and, and that it does have a lot of traffic to it. Ah, yes, and I'm not gonna even butcher that, um, <laughs> uh, Commissioner. Um, and uh, that, um, La Chiqui, there we go. <laughs> I knew it wasn't, I knew it was, I knew, I knew, but I didn't know. Um, and that, um, you know, stakeholders uh, for rice. Um, the last thing that I, I kind of observed um, was that um, uh, several people or a person mentioned um, that they felt like the transit cyclists in particular and transportation considerations were kind of lumped into a, as a monolithic group or stakeholder group. Um, and that it, it may be something left to be desired um, for transit cyclists. Um, so, um, it'll be yet to be seen how the shared use path will will really work in practice. Um, so I think that's I think that covers a, a lot of it. Uh, I apologize if I did not get all of it, but um, we, we were working with a couple of technical difficulties as well. <laughs> no, I think you covered it, Lisa. Great, thank you. Lisa, uh, Haima. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, Nick and I were at a, a great group with I think we were group four. Um, we had a good discussion about um, sort of what people are reacting to the concepts and some other issues on the corner. Um, I'm going to cover these and I think I'll, I'm going to have a little bit of a pivot to ask for some feedback from our, our forecast team. So be ready because um, we had a question I thought and I, as I was answering it, I was saying they could answer this better than me. Um, we heard from a general support from folks who say they like the, the, the support for walking and biking along the corridor and that this sort of prioritizes and enhances those possibilities. Um, several people expressed concern though about the, the safety of a shared walk bike space, that that could be confusing. Um, and if it's not marked or managed well, there's a good poss there's a possibility of people having collisions. So a lot of, a lot of concern and, and thoughts about, we need to make sure we're figuring out the details along that. Um, someone pointed out that people are currently driving on the sidewalks anyway with bikes, which they're, I don't think they're supposed to do, but that's happening. So it could, hopefully be a safer version of, of that. Um, um, we had some discussion about, of course, that that, that implies, I think, and even who's in our group mentioned that in the chat, um, the need to, to make sure that's clear. This is a slow corridor. If you're riding a bike, you need to not be able to expect to blast through here at top speed. This is more about local access. Um, we did have a couple people mention that this is better than what's there now. All three concepts would be an improvement, to be honest. So there's, there is a lot of possibility for net gain along here. Um, we had some questions about um, how we're reaching out to communities um, multilingual, including Karen, and we I think we'll be following up offline in terms of some details of that. But suffice to say, I um, we do ha have done some multilingual outreach, and the website has some Google Translate capabilities for people who want to um, have it on the fly, um, somewhat imperfect but still functional translator. 
Um, let's see. Um, Long-term resident. I'm just looking here, talking about the importance of the of concept B being acceptable, but with, with of course reserving judgment on some of the details because we need to make sure that they work well. Um, people interested in listening in, and the comment um, which I'm sort of going to look in the direction of Juana and Jen. Um, just questions about how outreach to community members and to some specific um, stakeholders along the corridor, like the Hmong Elder Center and others. Um, we're making sure we're reach, reached out to diverse businesses and diverse people on the corridor. So um, I talked about that a little bit, but I wondered if I could put one, one of you in the spot to talk a little bit about the work the, the liaisons did in reaching out to community organizations. Could one of you speak up, Juana or Jen? Hi. Well, so when we went out to do our, our field work, the Hmong Elder Center was actually closed. So um, while we reached out to individuals and invited them into focus groups, we did not speak with anyone at the Hmong Elder Center because it, it wasn't operating. We did, however, through the magic of Nino, have access to a variety of communities that, that their liaisons put us in touch with. And so they were able to share information that we produced with people. Uh, the, the hardest part of this work has been trying to do deeper engagement into language specific communities. And so we hosted a focus group um, for Hmong speakers and then a mixed focus group using um, Melissa Vang and her work in the Hmong community along the, the North End corridor. Um, I'm trying to think of other spaces where we've had at the initial meetings that we hosted, the open houses that we hosted, we had a Spanish speaker available on site. And we've tried multiple times to have at least one person on the team who speaks another language at the events and they have not had much engagement. The best opportunities that we had around diversity was doing deep reaches into minority owned businesses in the quarter, which we went into and engaged one-on-one -on -one with them and shared the activity books that were available for children and ask if they would share those with their customers. So between the focus groups, the walking engagement for the businesses along Rice Street and the individual liaisons who connected with community specific projects. That's the way that we've activated communities through COVID. Thank you. Thanks, Alana. Is that it for your group, Hila? Yep, unless Nick has anything he wants to add. Uh, I was typing up and I'll say it just thanks to Juana for doing all that work. Um, it's really difficult to do and, and going door to door is exactly what we needed out there. So thanks. Thanks, Nick. Uh, last group is uh, Cody's group. Did they go to the bar already? I had to find my mute button. Oh, there he is. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, we had uh, some good discussion, um, heard from a couple of small business owners um, on the corridor who were uh, worried about the amount of traffic that would be diverted off the corridor um, and how that would affect those, those businesses, um, as well as some of the uh, access uh, changes and how those would also uh, affect those, especially the uh, smaller uh, locally owned businesses. Um, so we talked a bit about, um, you know, the goals of the project and, and how we were working uh, with the community and, and trying to work with business owners to uh, make sure that that didn't happen um, and that what we produced uh, would, would keep them here on the corridor. That's what we want. Um, we also heard from a few people um, really liking the, the four to three conversion and the slowing down of vehicles and the addition of some uh, median crossings for pedestrians, both uh, from a pedestrian perspective of being easier to cross the road and as well from a uh, driver's perspective of um, 
maybe not having to pay, well, I want to say not pay that attention, but um, not have to focus on a corner that's four lanes over, checking to see if there's uh, somebody that's going to uh, try to get across the roadway. Um, so making it a little less stressful for, for all uh, by making those uh, safer crossing opportunities. Um, what else is there? Um, also, uh, the question about uh, transit and whether um, buses would be stopping in the lane or, or pulling off the roadway. Um, so uh, BRT buses will be stopping in the lane. That's, that's their um, preferred uh, mode. Uh, local stops, uh, we have a couple of, of bus uh, pullouts uh, located along the corridor where we can fit them. Um, the, the width there uh, played a hand in that, uh, making sure we had enough room to get a bus out of the roadway. Uh, also keep taking into account uh, how those pullouts get smaller and smaller, the more snow we get. Um, so we've been working closely with Metro Transit on, on where those uh, should and could be located. Am I missing anything, Jen? There was a question about catalyst sites for redevelopment and how those were chosen. And so maybe that's something that um, we could talk about as a team and, and get more information on that we can share back out with the community. I can um, jump on that one really quick. I, it's, it, I think there was, we have had a lot of sort of side work that we're not sharing because not because we're trying to not roll it out, but just because there's so much out there in terms of these parallel processes and things that we're ready to already start thinking about the next phase with the next open house and preparing for that. And some of that discussion has been around sites along the corridor. Um, I think what that refers to is some sort of sketch work we've been doing in terms of where are opportunities for public spaces along the corridor that are meaningful and enrich this, that are beyond that. We are not making plans for people's sites without the permission or, or going ahead with any specific designs. But as we're thinking about the super tight corridor, we have to think about what's happening along the corridor as well. Um, I'll, I'll call out one, one area in particular, the, the Lawson area, um, Lawson and Rice, um, the, the St. Paul Parks um, Department, which has been a wonderful partner along with all the other departments of the city on this, has been looking at a, a Rice Street Recreational Center. And we've had a lot of in-depth discussion with them about how their plans are progressing and how as they're building that out and the roads being built out, that whole space works. It's not just a couple of things side by side, but it's making a meaningful and valuable public space that's on the, on the roadway sidewalk, but also on their land. So that type of discussion is kind of pieces we're having, and I think we'll have opportunities in the future to bring that forward. We just didn't want to overwhelm people with too much stuff, but that's been a discussion. Um, certainly nothing um, has been decided, and there'll be a lot of details to be figured out, as Scott will talk about in a minute, but didn't want to suggest that there were other, these other plans being developed that, that were not um, fully integrated with our approach here. I hope that helps. And we can provide more, we'll provide more feedback separate too. Thanks, Ayla. Yeah. Okay, um, that's all for report outs. And, and what I intend to do is, is again, just a couple of slides to end up with here and, and we'll get at uh, the exact question that Valentine asked in the, in the, uh, the chat there as well, uh, the website and, and how you it can engage online. Um, but I will also say that as, as we close out our presentation, we'll be happy to, to stick around for a little bit. If people have some other questions for us, be happy to do that. Um, next slide. So on the implementation side, I mentioned earlier, we are, we are developing a, a full implementation plan that gets at what you see on the page here, which is construction of the, of the, uh, the corridor, but also the, the other elements that we want to bring along with that. So it'll be a kind of a living document um, as it goes along of, of resources and, and kind of how this is going to engage. And a lot of, a lot of what Hila was just talking about, what others have talked about here, um, how does the whole corridor work together with the transportation improvement? So we're here at the, towards the end of 2021, we selected the concept that we want to move forward with. We, we feel like we have a few months yet of just getting down into the details of what this actually means, um, working with the city of St. Paul on those details as well, because they, they, they affect city streets um, in a great way. 
and then we'll be at, back out again, um, probably um, early spring. We'll have another one of these open houses to show you that that finished layout. So that's the beginning of 2022 that you see here. That's kind of the end of this little preliminary phase. And the next phase is actually to design this because this is a very complex corridor because this is a long two mile corridor. We anticipate 18 months or so to design this. Um, so that's what the detailed design is. We'll figure out those details like how stormwater happen. What are, what are the streetscaping aesthetic place kind of elements of this? Um, right away considerations. We do anticipate that there may be some some smaller strip takings in, in some areas or easements for sidewalk, uh, but no wholesale right of way acquisition. Um, how we integrate transit into this, including the, the G-Line project, and then how this project is staged and funded. funded. I mentioned earlier, we don't wanna just tear up all two miles at once. So what's that staging actually look like and how do we work with, with the community to, to make that happen? So we anticipate construction starting in, in 2024 and probably be two years of construction uh, because we'll do it kind of piece by piece and try to uh, try to, to have the least impact possible. Then next slide. And to Valentine's point earlier, we do have a website that will flash up at the very end of this. Um, we would love everyone here to go online and, and engage with that resource. You've made comments here, we've recorded those, but we'd love you to go on and and, uh, and, and put them formally into the, the, the input ID map. Just get into that map and get into some details. Um, we will be putting a recording of this uh, conversation online, a copy of the presentation will be online. Uh, there'll be more resources coming. You'll be able to see cross sections. The visualizations we showed today will be on there. So there'll be a whole suite of information on there that you can, you can uh, look at, engage with, with on your own time at your own speed, um, come back to as many times as you want. So there'll be a lot of resources available to you there. Um, next slide. Um, this is the big picture of what I just got done saying. Um, we'll develop that project implementation plan with feedback from you. We will continue to engage people. The county's committed to engagement all the way through the construction of this process. So there'll be continual engagement through the end of this preliminary period through the next design phase and through the construction phase and uh, the next step is of course to move into implementation of that as as we do that so um can you flip forward two slides just want to put there there's the website so if you go on ramseycounty.us slash rice street study that'll get you to this site you can scroll down and and look at look at a number of the the uh, resources on there and, and keep checking back as we continue to put more resources on there. So I'm going to, uh, to declare that that is the, the end of the presentation, the end of our formal part of this. And so if you, if you need to leave, feel free to do so. Um, get more information on the website. And also, uh, like I said, we'll stick around if, if, if people want to want to chat a little bit more. I do want to acknowledge it was nice to have uh, Commissioner Modest Castillo here, and I noticed Commissioner McGuire was on as well. So I think it's a just pretty awesome that we get our elected officials engaged in this and and are willing to come on and engage with everybody here. So thank you very much for for showing up to this. We appreciate it.